This week, a constitution bench of five judges reserved a judgment in a critical case concerning the independence of the Election Commission of India or the ECI. The ECI challenge is the ninth constitution bench hearing to be concluded since September this year, when 25 constitution bench cases were revived by former CJI UU Lalit. The story of this case begins in 2015, when advocate Anup Baranwal filed a public interest litigation arguing that the current system of appointing members of the Election Commission is unconstitutional. Currently, the executive enjoys the power to make appointments, which the PIL claims has degraded the ECI's independence over time. So what was Mr. Baranwal seeking from the court? He wanted the court to issue directions to create an independent, collegium-like system for ECI appointments. He claims that the current system of appointments violates Article 324.2 of the Constitution. Article 324 states that the Election Commission shall have the power to control and direct elections to the Parliament, state legislatures and the offices of the President and the Vice President of India. 324.2 states that the Chief Election Commissioner and other Commissioners will be appointed by the President. However, and this is the part to focus in this case, the appointment process is subject to laws that the Parliament may make. When the Constitution was being drafted, the Constituent Assembly was concerned that the power of the President to appoint Election Commission members was excessive, and so they made it subject to laws made by the Parliament. In his PIL, Mr. Baranwal argued that although Article 324 places a check on the President's powers, no such law has been enacted by the Parliament so far. So presently, the President makes appointments as per the recommendations of the Prime Minister. In this context, Mr. Baranwal sought a transparent and neutral system of appointing members of the Election Commission. The key concern in allowing the executive to appoint members of the election commission is that the dominant executive will appoint members who will make policies that favor them. Effectively, this will allow the election commission, a body that must necessarily be independent, to become an arm of the ruling party. This is a cause for grave concern for India's widely celebrated democratic process. Advocate Prashant Bhushan appeared on behalf of Mr. Baranwal. He argued that the judiciary must fill the gaps in the ECI appointment system. Senior advocate Gopal Shankar Narayanan argued that free and fair elections are a basic feature of the constitution. The SC must ensure that election commissioners are protected from the pressures of the executive to maintain their independence. Appearing for the union, Attorney General Venkat Ramani argued that the Supreme Court must not intervene in this case. They must respect the separation of powers and refrain from deciding a case concerning the powers of the executive. He stressed that Article 324 of the constitution vest the power to make laws on ECI appointments in the parliament. The five judge bench led by Justice K.M. Joseph appeared unconvinced. They pushed back, stating that the parliament had not fulfilled this duty for over 70 years. Additional Solicitor General Balbir Singh, appearing for the union, argued that the petitioner has not cited any instance in history where someone unfit for the position was appointed as election commission member. He said that the ECI has been functioning well, with no reason to justify the court's interference. In other words, Mr. Singh argued, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta echoed these arguments. He said that even if there are circumstances justifying the re-examination of the appointment system, it is for the parliament to look into it, not the court. Mr. Shankar Narayanan countered this point in his rejoinder. He emphasized the importance of the EC's role in a democracy and stated that the functioning of the ECI must be ironclad to ensure there is not even a perception of wrongdoing. Now, this case raises some critical questions. How does the executive identify eligible candidates from the pool of civil servants? What is the basis for recommending a name to a prime minister? What factors do the prime minister and the president consider when approving the recommendations? The bench reserved a judgment on 24th November. The judgment is expected to provide clarity on whether the current process, which is rather opaque, is unconstitutional. Will the Supreme Court issue guidelines to set up a collegium-like body to make appointments? Or will it direct the parliament to enact a law to set up an independent committee? Visit SCObserver.in for reports on all the hearings and updates on all things Supreme Court.